and let's move on to another problem. So now we've got the number 54. And again, we're going to make a tree. So 54 is a product of 9 and 6. You can use other numbers if you want. It's also 2 and 27 if you'd prefer to go that route. But I always like to keep my numbers small if I can. Uh, generally, though, whatever the first two numbers I think of, that's usually what I'll write down. And 9 can be broken up into a product of 3 and 3. Those are both prime numbers, so we can highlight the fact that the branches are ended. And 6 is a product of 3 and 2, which again, those are both prime numbers. So those branches have ended. And let's just highlight it. I'm going to draw circles here to make it obvious. So 54 is a product of three threes multiplied together and then a 2 at the end. Or you could see it as 3 to the third times 2. And this is effectively what you're going to put into this box here. And like I said, 54 is the only number with this unique combination of primes multiplied together. Okay, let's keep going on these. So now we have the number 87, which is a fairly big number. This one's a little bit complicated. So when you're not sure what two numbers multiply into something, what I would recommend doing is starting with your prime numbers and working your way up. So start at 2, see if 2 goes into it. If it doesn't, then go to 3. If 3 doesn't work, go to 5, then 7, 11, 13, and so on. And this is more advanced than this particular class, but I do want to mention that you don't have to check all of these. You really only have to check up to the square root of this number. And the square root of 87 is slightly bigger than 9, but it's less than 10. So we just have to check up to the prime number 7, because that's the smallest one below this number. And if none of these numbers were to go into it, then we can conclude that 87 is itself a prime number. But in most cases, one of these will actually divide into it. So anyways, let's check out uh, the number 2 to start. And 2, we know, doesn't go into this because it ends in 7. If it ended in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, or in other words, an even number, then we know that 2 would go into it evenly. So we know 2 doesn't work, so then we go to 3. And this number is actually divisible by 3. And the way to tell is you can add the digits. So 8 plus 7 is 15. And when you add them together, if you get a sum that is itself divisible by 3, then the original number is divisible by 3. So just as another example, because this trick is a little bit obscure, not everyone knows it. So let's say we had a number like 5, 1, 7, 2. And we want to know, does 3 go into this number evenly? And so to check for 3, you literally just add the digits. 5 plus 1 plus 7 plus 2. So that's 6, this is 9, and you get 15. And honestly, if you get a 2 or 3 digit number, you can continue just adding the digits. 1 plus 5 is 6. But once you find some final answer here, if this number is divisible by 3, then the original number is. And since 3 goes into 6 evenly, 3 would also go into this number evenly. And you can check that on a calculator, but it does work. So same idea here. Except now we have a simpler number. We can just add 8 and 7. We get 15. And 15 is divisible by 3, which means that 87 can be divided by 3. So we know at least one of the branches is 3. And if we divide 3 into 87 to figure out what the other factor is, 3 goes into 8 twice, two whole times, and there's 2 left over. So I'll write a little 2 there. 3 goes into 27 nine times. So 87 divided by 3 is 29. Now, 3 is the end of this branch, but 29, we have to determine, is that divisible by anything or is that a prime number? And again, you only have to check up to the square root of this. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. So this is like 5 point something if we took its square root. So really, we only have to check the first three. We have to check up to 5. And it's not divisible by 2 because it's an odd number. It's not divisible by 3 because if we add 2 and 9, we get 11. And 11 is not divisible by 3. And it's not divisible by 5 because it doesn't end in a 0 or a 5. So this is actually a prime number. So 
we finished our branches at two different prime numbers and we can conclude that 87 is the product of 3 and 29. So that is the unique prime factorization of 87. And let's do one more. So now we want the prime factorization of 23. And 23, again, we're going to run through the prime numbers. If you're not sure, then just run through the prime numbers. So 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. But the square root of 23 is a little bit less than 5. So we really only have to check the first two. 2 does not go into it because it's an odd number. And 3 does not go into it because if we add 2 and 3, we get 5. And 5 is not divisible by 3. So these don't work. And we don't even have to bother checking the other ones. 5 doesn't work. 7 doesn't work anyways. But we don't have to check them because you only have to check up to the square root of this number. So 23 is actually just a prime number. And if you remember my original list I drew of the prime numbers, 23 was the one I stopped at. The one after this would be 29, then 31, and so on. We did come across 29 as well. So every once in a while, you will have to deal with slightly bigger prime numbers. But the more familiar you are with this list of prime numbers, the better these problems will be. So for this one, I'm just going to write 23. And again, you wouldn't write 23 times 1 because 1's not a prime number. And it would potentially make it no longer unique because I can do times it by 1 just one time or I can multiply it by 1 as many times as I want. And so then you effectively have an infinite amount of ways you can factor this prime or do a prime factorization. And we don't want that. We want a unique way to do prime factorization for every number. And because of that, every number does have its own unique prime factorization. Like 25 is 5 times 5. It's the only number that can be factored into these prime numbers. No other number has the combination of 5 times 5. 